Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. I am here most mornings, Monday to Thursday, from 7 a.m. to about 8 a.m. Mountain Time. And all month long, we've really been playing with this idea of archetypes, symbols, myths, and images. And I woke up this morning with a desire to paint and just really play with some paint and I was thinking about finishing up some collages I had started last week and so for inspiration I just started sorting through some of my collage images and actually this page has two really fun images on both sides so I'm probably going to make some photocopies but we have this gorgeous ice sculpture but I've held on to this beautiful image of the archetype of the peacock and in some ways, it's an exaggeration of the lover archetype who is very self-centered, all about himself, loves to be the attention seeker. So I thought we might have some fun working with complementary colors inspired by this artist, Yulia Brodskaya on Instagram. She's Yulia Brodskaya, Art Yulia, or her website, Art Yulia with a Y. And she is a paper artist, and so if you can see, this is all done with kind of old-school quilling techniques and folded paper techniques, just absolutely stunningly beautiful what she has created simply with paper. And some of her pieces are quite large and fabulous, but I love her use of blues, oranges, and yellows here. So I want to mimic this palette and this design to create our own peacock and have it represent good morning Marion have it represent the sort of shadow and exaggerated side of the lover archetype and so I actually turned my journal vertical instead of horizontal to get the shape of the page I wanted because I am trying to sort of mimic this image here and um, I drew the beginnings of the peacock which are really quite simple to draw when you look at this image it's just a big s curve around the outside here and then a echo of that curved line and I'm just drawing the neck and head and then it's almost like there's a bit of an oval shape here so you can see I've got my oval shape here. I have my big S curve here. I have my triangle nose and then I have my sort of long neck. So it's easier than it looks like to draw this peacock and the rest I'm gonna do with paint and let it be abstract and inspired by this artist Yulia Brodskaya. Yulia Brodskaya. I don't remember what um, Oh, this is from What Women Create, from the magazine What Women Create. So I'm not trying to repeat what she did, but just to be, again, inspired, inspired by her. So we're going to work with a variety of blues and oranges. So I'm going to gather some paint here. Maybe even a touch of violet is calling to me. Doo -doo -doo. looking for some there's some deep turquoise so we're just going to kind of see we'll start with our blues and go from there and I was looking for my phthalo blue there it is And I've got a little bit of black and a little bit of white, as always, too. Really important for your palette. <clears throat> and I taught a, a fun class for Allie Manning's Handmade Book Cub last Friday using my normal visual journaling style, working in a handmade journal. And we were <clears throat> creating a fun page related to our word of the year my phrase of the year is compassionate action and so i had printed out a few different sizes of the sacred circle design and the self-portrait and this little image was just lying 
<clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little froggy this morning, so I may just paint and not talk a lot. All right, so, and I may have to go grab some more water too. Um, anyway, so I saw this peacock and this was just sort of lying on my table here and I thought, well, isn't that appropriate for this idea of the lover or self-absorbed archetype to be sort of seeing myself as the peacock? So this might end up on our page here as well. Good morning, Blanca. Great to see you both here as well. So that's where we're going. We're going to work with complementary colors. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So here we've got blues, primarily blues and oranges, but there's also some pops of yellows almost leaning into the reds and definitely a variety of blues from very pale blues to sort of a purpley blue. So we're probably going to do a little bit of color mixing today. And I'm probably going to just do that even right on the page. And we're just going to see where we get to. But I think I'm going to start with layering in some darks and then going over that with some of these lights. And I'm thinking, what am I thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to put a piece of paper down to use as my palette just so that my colors show up a little bit better. Okay, so I'm curious about these colors that we've got here. These heavy body acrylics are often really challenging to get open. Sometimes just soaking them in water for a minute, and we'll see if we can do that. All right, so let's come in with this. So this is a Liquitex Heavy Body Thalo Blue. And what heavy body means is it's just, there's not a lot of water in this paint, right? There is a lot of uh, pigment, a lot of the acrylic binder, so it's a much, much thicker paint. It's what you see a lot of acrylic artists using to create a lot of texture on their pages. And this is just a cheapy, craft smart, bright blue. So again, and I can see that it's kind of separated, so it might need a little bit of mixing. Let's get some white down and just play with some blues and then we'll let that dry and play with some oranges and I want to talk about orange. I watched this really great video on color mixing over the, the weekend and you know talking about the truest orange is a cadmium orange. But learning to mix our own oranges has everything to do with our reds and yellows. I'm just going to get some color down on the page. Again, I'm not trying to completely copy what it is that she's doing, but just paying attention to where she has some of these lights and darks. I think I was also very drawn to the, to the circles on the page because I do love circles. I know I'm going to have his crest up here. Just want to kind of move some color about. I think I'm just going to have to make a bit of a mess here for a while. And I'm just sort of noticing how, you know, that peacock's tail is sort of spread out across the page and really even around his whole body. So just mimicking some of that action.
and I'm noticing I want to darken this up a little bit more so I'm going to see if I can get these paints open. There we go. So this is a permanent dark violet, which is a quite a, a dark purple. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the blue. And I have a combination. I have just a couple of these nice golden fluid acrylics. And then I had bought at one point a set of the Liquitex heavy body acrylic. If you've never played with the heavy body acrylics. It's fun to play with them because they do create a lot of texture, especially on canvas, especially on canvas. And we're going to try just a touch of this. This is a turquoise, phthalo turquoise, that is a very green blue. So not all blues are created equal. So yes, we have some pure blues with that phthalo blue. But if I come in and add a little bit of purple, I get a nice darker shade there. So I've got a more red-blue, and then this turquoise over here is very much a green-blue. So again, just noticing that all colors are created equal. Giving yourself time to have some fun with that color mixing. That's better. I'm wanting to get some of those darks in there. Again, not thinking about uh, any of the details. One of my favorite ways to paint is just to put color on the page. I didn't do any journaling or writing this morning. Got up a little later than usual. My husband and I had fun last night for Christmas. I got him tickets to see. Kind of a interesting. So there was four musicians that play in the style of bluegrass with a classical influence. And uh, it was a very interesting show at one of our local little theaters. So it was our first time to attend local theater here in our new home. So that was fun too. But of course, we were up way past our normal bedtime. And then maybe I'm going to start to I feel like that. It's just it's time to switch my brush, change up shapes and sizes. Again, just having a lot of fun creating this playful page. I'm going to let the, some of that white background just stay there and stay white. Just cleaning off my brush. So this is a, a page, I love this, that has been underneath journal pages. And I'm looking at this like yummy little bits of collage there. So using just plain old I think this is just a recycled piece of printer paper as a palette. I can't get a lot of water on here, right? But um, when I'm working fast and quick in these morning sessions as opposed to on canvas, it's uh, a great way to just create some of your own collage materials. Let's see. I want to maybe just start marking out some of these circles on the page. You notice she has kind of a, a line of them here around the body and a line of them here, but they're not quite even. And they definitely have some variation in size that adds to the visual interest of the page. So I'm just going to move some of these. If you think about a peacock's feather, these circles really represent the eyes that you see on beautiful peacock feathers. Coming in now with just a little touch more of that purple. I'm just going to have some fun letting this flow all the way off the edge of my page. Don't feel like you need to be 
constrained or particular. I'm going to bring a little bit of that purple in here where she has some darks. So again, I'm just kind of having some fun being inspired by her abstract design of the peacock. And as I'm looking at this page, so right now I have a very monochromatic page, meaning it's all shades of blue. It makes me sort of think about and they're all on the, because I added that violet, they're on the red blue side or the pure blue, 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 blue can't talk this morning side. And I'm wondering, what is it going to look like? Is this going to feel, look how green, you probably can't see that on the page. But when I added this thalo, nope, too bright, this thalo turquoise in here, you can kind of get a sense of that. Let's pull that out some so you can see it. It's a very, very green, green blue, and it doesn't match, right? So it's not the right, so I either have to do something to make it a little less green, which is really hard to do, or I need to just let go of that color, which is kind of kind of what I'm feeling, or I definitely have to put it in a few more spots, but it doesn't like she definitely has some just little touches in a few places. And it's probably going to get buried over later anyway. So since it's already on there, I'm putting it in just a very, very few places on my page. And I think I'm going to come in now with some, just some white in a few different spots, maybe start to blend a little bit of this background. My brush is still a little bit blue. So maybe smoothing some of this out, blending some of those colors. I'm gonna white out my circles. Knowing that I'm gonna put a lot of those brighter colors inside those circles. May take a, a couple of coats to just get those with some nice pops of white so my brights will show. When I was a girl, I definitely went through a quilling stage, especially around the holidays. Anybody ever, else ever have a sort of quilling stage? Just letting the paint do the work here and my brush create a little bit of that feathery, more textured look. So I'm going to build up probably lots of layers on this page. It was really interesting. Blanca, the bass player, was a classically trained musician. And a couple of the artists were deeply steeped and trained in... Americana bluegrass music, which I love bluegrass. And so, and then the violinist was the son of the bassist, which was fun to have a father son duo up there. So, some of this stuff was quite experimental, but the four of them together were amazing and such talented musicians. And it's always such a treat just to be in the presence of talented musicians in our the little local little, I shouldn't say little, the lovely local theater was very nice. So it was a, it was a good outing. It had been snowing all day for a couple of days. So the roads were a little snowy and it was one degree outside, literally one degree outside. So it was a cold and snowy adventure, but we did it. Okay. So starting to build up here, just coming in. That's probably a little more purple than I want that to be, so we'll have to come back and blue that up again, but that's okay for now. Just letting all the colors on my palette, all these blues, kind of come together. 
and I'm using just short, quick brush strokes. We've talked about this before, like letting that brush do the work for you to create some of that texture. Okay, so I'm introducing a brighter blue here. And I love working in a lot of detail like this. I don't know why my, on my end my camera seems just a little bit blurry this morning. And every time I add a color in one place, I add that color in a few other places, just moving that color around the page. Again, we want those colors to flow around the page. And if you notice in this original image where the eye is very much drawn to these dramatic blues here and in the center, but there's enough of them that our eye flows through the whole page, but our focal point is right here in this third of the page as well. I've always loved peacocks and uh, think that they're quite beautiful, but they're also very, very noisy. If you've ever been around a peacock at all, you know that they're very, very noisy and they can be very protective as well. All right, so I think we have a nice selection of beautiful Blues started on the page. Probably going to want to eventually grab some Posca markers. I may not get today. Let's see. And add, I love some of the fine detail that she's created, the marks and patterns she's created. All right, so I'm going to set aside my blues. And we're going to grab now some yellows and reds and oranges. Make some space on my table here. I've still got my white and my black. And I have a few pre-mixed oranges. I've got a cadmium yellow hue. Got a primary magenta, which could make some interesting oranges. And is this my, and this pyrrole red. I love, this is a, a already an orangier red, and it definitely makes a nice, um, makes a really nice orange. So I have a lot to play with here. I'm going to grab another sheet of scrap paper here. And I'm actually going to start by mixing some of my own oranges. So that's a little bit of that primary magenta. A little bit of our pyrrole red and quite a lot of our yellow. So one of the things that you will discover when you start mixing your own colors, and so I'm just gonna grab a, a palette knife to do a little bit of the mixing, which is great because it's just kind of letting this piece get nice and dry here before I add any more color to it, is when you start to mix colors, 
you need the tiniest, tiniest amount. I have way more on my page than I need. So you need the tiniest amount of the red and lots of the yellow. Otherwise, you just end up with a red that's slightly yellow. So you can see that's turning a little bit orange, but that was still a lot. And once you get all that red in there, it can be really challenging to brighten it up. But I kind of like that really nice red-orange that I've got going on there. So we're going to stick with that one. I'm going to get some more yellow. to the end of that container and I'm going to take the tiniest tiniest amount of that primary rose magenta and some yellow and see what how those colors end up looking different so you can see already I've got a much brighter orange than I do over here. So they created two nice, very different shades of orange on my palette over here. Cleaning off my palette brush, palette knife. I want a little bit of pure yellow to add on here as well. She does have some pure yellow. And I'm probably going to want to mix my oranges with a little bit of white to get some different tints of those oranges as well. All right, I'm going to get a clean brush. And I'm going to start with my darker orange here. And I'm going to come in and just put it over the tops of these. And what I'm noticing is that Hmm, I may want to come in and add even a little bit more white to make these colors pop a little bit, but we're just going to start building up the colors. Again, I'm not trying to completely mimic or imitate what it is that she's created just being inspired by the shapes, the colors, and the complementary shows. How's everybody doing this morning? Did you guys do anything fun on the weekend? Staying warm and dry. So I'm noticing I'm going to want to come back in with my blues here and make these more, more circular to match some of the other circles on the page. So we'll come back in a little bit to, to do some of that detail work. I'm going to start with just bringing in And working with paper, her circles are, you know, they're round, right? So I'm working more abstractly with a brush here. So I'm not trying to make my circles be perfectly round. Again, you can see I'm just moving all around the piece. Adding that darkest shade of orange first. And I will do his face last. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had an awesome time teaching to Allie Manning's Handmade Book Club, where they make a handmade book a month, and she brings in guest artists to share fun ideas of what do you do inside the, the books you make. 
but she has an awesome YouTube channel where she goes live most uh, Thursdays and talks about her art inspiration and different bookmaking tips. Also a great YouTube channel to pay attention to. I'm going to come in just with some of this A few spots is pure pyrrole red in here. Don't need a lot of it. Again, just sort of keeping things in the same families. And I love how bright her piece is, and so definitely wanting to get to that. Uh, where I'm sort of brightening things up. So now I'm going to come in with my lighter shade of orange. I'm just going to start to do that same thing. And I can tell I'm going to want to go into these circles. They need a nice pop of white. I really want these colors to be pretty vibrant on here. So it's a fun tip when you're working with acrylics over the top of a dark palette and you can't get those colors to pop as much as you want them to. So just put some white down, let it get really dry and then bring those colors back again. And I'm okay with the background. I like where the background is going, but definitely wanting those circles to pop a little bit. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to get this really dry. Aw, visited your sister. That sounds awesome. I love it. So I'm going to get this super, super dry. And then I'm going to come back in with some more white and some more color. So I'll mute myself. I like this. Okay, I'm going through lots of brushes this morning to keep my colors really separate and bright. So I'm just going to come right back over these circles. You didn't miss anything, Blanca. I was just uh, drying my page, so it was a good time to have to reboot. So I want the circles and the peacock over here to be my primary focal points that are sort of telling the story of the piece. Everything else is just background for now. So I'm going to come in with this white here in these circles so that when I go in to add the detail, my colors can pop because I can see how my all my blues uh, excuse me all my reds and oranges were just sort of blending into the rest of the back i think i'm going to bring a little bit more of that white even to my back
And again, working with acrylics, abstract acrylics this way, it's just a matter of building up layers, pushing layers back, building up layers, pushing them back. Just reminding yourself again and again that everything is paint overable, to let go of layers, to not get attached, right? Don't get attached. And it just ends up creating a much richer piece. Some of that white back in. And I'll do that eye last. Noticing I'm going to want to darken up the colors behind. His face, so his face stands out a lot more from the background. So again, I'm just following the story around the page. Having fun with these bursts of color around the page. Come back in, bring some of this blue back around his face. Definitely going to get in here with my Posca markers to add detail to his eye and outline his face. And the little bits at the top of his crown up here are probably going to end up being that dark violet. But I'm going to paint him in with what I have here so that I don't forget. Coming back in, I can see all those colors sort of layering up, but just bringing back some of my blues here. Making this maybe a little bit less harsh on the edge. Are you guys painting along with me? Are you watching? I'm hoping you're painting along on your own adventures this morning. So again, I picked the peacock as that kind of representative of the shadow side of our lover archetype, right? They're self-centered, focused on self. They're more focused on love than sort of true intimate connection. And mostly I just wanted to paint the peacock even more than I wanted to have that be attached to what I was doing this morning. I was really drawn to the peacock, and then it just uh, was thinking about the lover archetype and how the peacock is a good metaphor for the, the shadow side. All right, because I've gotten that white down, my blues are much more blue. That color in his eye makes him look a little mad and crazy at the moment, but I'm just putting some color in there. Added a little bit more red to that orange. Just gets a little uh, more variation in the shades of orange that I'm using.
Well, thank you for being here, Blanca. Yep, agreed. I'm sort of doing that same sort of feeling that need to just pause and look at it and think about where am I, where am I going? Let it get dry. We're in the messy middle, kind of that sort of, you know, chaos stage for sure. It's this fun explosion of color. come in with some pure yellow and really see if we can get some pops of color in there. And because I'm not being patient and letting it dry, it's blending in, but it's going to give me an idea of where I'm going here. As always, I'm just moving that color around the page. Making sure that that color is in multiple places around the page. Bye, Blanca. Have a great day. Just adding that yellow over the white, I start to really brighten up. The whole page brightens up when we add that yellow. Good morning, Yvonne. Great to see you here. We're painting a peacock this morning. inspired by this beautiful paper art piece created by Yulia Brodskaya. And working in primarily a complementary color palette of oranges and yellows. And I'm sort of loving the explosion of color that's happening. Did you add a little green, Marion? It turned a little green as you added the yellow over the blues. Thank you for letting me know when you're here joining me live. It's great to know that people are popping in to stay hello, even if you only stay for a minute or two. I love hearing from you. Coming in with a, a smaller brush and just continuing to work my way around the page. The more of that white that we add, the more we're able to just sort of brighten things up around the page or push them backwards and make them a little bit softer. This is getting to that point where it needs to just sit and get really dry and I need to walk away from it, come back with a fresh 
perspective and a fresh eye. Added green on dried blues. And did you like the green? Sometimes it's just that one little shift or pop of color can make a world of difference. So I'm just pausing to look at it. Probably going to come back and do something with this white on his head, but it gives me an idea of where I want some of this to go. And I'm thinking it's going to be time to switch to my Posca markers for some of the final line work and detail. But I'm pretty happy with this explosion of color and this abstract peacocks. And this is that point where, again, where it can the part of me that wants to just keep painting is thinking, oh, I want to just keep painting. This is so fun to paint. I have paint left on my palette, but what I know I need to do is just to set it aside for now, to walk away, let it get super, super dry, and then come back with my Posca markers for some of those final, final details. And I can speed that up by getting it really dry, more iridescent. Mmm, love it. Yeah, a little, some little pops of metallic colors in here would be really fun to brighten this up as well. I'm wondering if I repeated some of these circles. Let's put some of that shape back. They're a little bit too pink, so I'm not liking that. So I'm going to come back in with some blues, I think. But it feels like a really good start for uh, Monday morning and our explosion of color here. And again, it feels like if I don't pause, if I just keep working, I'm going to mess it up. So I want to show you what I would do with all this paint on my palette real quick. And I'm going to set my peacock aside to dry, and I will either finish it live tomorrow morning or I will um, finish it later today if I have some time and show you the finished project. So I just grabbed another journal. Again, I love handmade journals. This was made in an old book. It's one I've been working in for a couple of years. And I'm literally just going to start to play with the paint on my palette. This was a little soul scribble drawing I did with a little owl here. I'm letting, again, that little small brush. I want to get all the paint off of that, and I want to use the paint on my palette. But when you take the extra paint and just put it on pages in your journal, then there's something to respond to the next time you want to start a, a, a piece. Even if that paint gets covered up and buried, and I'm letting some of those lines on the page just guide some of my marks here. I'm not trying to maintain those shapes. Sometimes I just literally 
scrape the paint when I have a lot to just fill up a page. I don't want to waste any of this paint. So next time I'm working in this journal, I'll have a place to start, right? I'll have a place to start. These pages are no longer blank. It's a great way to not waste paint, to not throw away paint, or wash it down your water system. You can see how much paint I actually had remaining on my palette. There was quite a lot. And then if I keep using this same piece of paper, <clears throat> let it continue to get all painty, <clears throat> excuse me, eventually it will make some really yummy collage paper. This is also a great way to practice brush strokes on the page. And figure out, you know, what are the marks that your brush will make. Even though I'm using the, the same brush, how many different things can I do with that brush? Just this one little angled brush makes so many different marks. And so it can be really helpful in your own creative practice to play with your tools and materials. And so now I have these two super fun painty pages that I could just sit here and keep painting on. For now, I'm going to set them aside to dry. And the next time I want to work in this art journal, I have a couple of pages to play with. I did that on this page as well. This was actually just leftover paint from this messy mandala painting that I started. So I used this as my palette and scraped things off on it. So again, I end up with these interesting pages, right? These interesting pages become the foundation of what's next. All right, so coming back to my peacock, I was thinking I was going to get some poscas and add some detail, but he's actually looking pretty groovy here. And I don't know that there's a lot that I want to do to him. But I do want to, I'm going to come in and look at how she really gave this eye some dimension here. So I'm just coming in with a, a black pen. And I'm just going to give a little bit of character to his eye, just using a black pen. I'll come back in with a touch of white over that to, to have the white of the eye. And then I'm also going to come in with this black around his beak. I love outlining my art this way. I think it really makes it pop on the page. This is not a water soluble pen I'm using, which could be really interesting. And so he's got, you know, this little line in his beak, but we want to sort of be able to see his face here. And I'm noticing that he's got some, that blue comes down in here in his peach more, in his cheek more. So sometimes just coming in with some black outlines can make things stand out. And knowing this isn't water soluble, or it is water soluble, might even be fun to a little bit of shading, just letting that edges of that black just flow. And help blend it into the page a little bit more. And 
can maybe create a little bit of shadow on this side of the page here. All right, a few little more details. So I think I'm going to also use that black to, I got that in there, it doesn't want to draw, to just show off the beautiful crown on his head. I want a little bit more of that dark phthalo blue and maybe a little bit more of that violet purple to darken things up a little bit. And maybe do a little more shading around the edges of my circles with these darker colors to just give them a little shadow and make them pop. I really want these little guys. They may need actually a little pop of white on them on his crown to just give them some highlights on there to make them stand out from the piece. I feel like some of my darker, darker blues have gotten a little bit lost. So just giving that page a couple of minutes to dry. I can come back in with some of these darker colors again. So I worked dark to light and then coming back in again with these pops of dark. working with a small brush this time. And I'm actually kind of liking the little white dots on his head. I was thinking I was going to end up painting those out, but I don't think so. So again, just bringing back a little bit of those darks in there, not too much. Just put a little spot up. No, I think I like the white better, so I might come back over those with that little bit. She had his head was quite dark. Again, paint over, take it away, paint over, take it away, paint over, take it away. Just that back and forth and back and forth until you get to that final effect you really love. And then just a little bit more using the very tip of this little angle brush to get some of those thinner lines. All right, I'm pretty happy with this super playful exploding peacock here is kind of how it feels, like this beautiful just sort of opening up of the peacock. This may have gotten just a touch dark in here. I've lost kind of my mid blue, so I'm going to come back with this is a, I think it's a turquoise blue. Amsterdam turquoise blue. 
come in with a different brush. And maybe this is uh, what I need up here to just add some of that texture to his head, but not have it be so dark or so white. And same up here with his little crown. Again, just bringing back that. So I have a dark, dark blue. I have lots of really pale blues and just, you know, bringing back some of these. This one middle blue. I felt like the page needed a little more variety, but not necessarily the the white white. Again, using the brush to make those just different strokes. Trying to let that brush do the work for me as much as possible. This is why it's important when you're working on a piece like this in your visual journal to switch up your brush. Try different brush strokes in different sizes. If I were using my Posca's, I'd have a lot more control, but I think that controlled look of the lines of the Posca's would contrast with this kind of sort of abstract explosion. So I'm just trusting myself to just add the detail with the brush. Normally I just, I get kind of lazy and I can go to my Posca's. All right, now it's feeling complete. A fun, playful, colorful page to start this Monday morning off. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. I am here Monday to Thursday, most Mondays to Thursdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time working with visual journaling and it's hard to believe this is the end of our month tomorrow is the end of our month on working with archetypes myth and symbols and I'm going to go a new direction in February and I'm still sort of thinking about what that is but it's going to be something related to self-love and self-acceptance because it is February. It is that month of love. And we have to start by loving ourselves. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me live or watching the replay. As always, it's a pleasure to start my day painting in my PJs with all of you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I will be back here same time, same place tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.